don't know about you, but I print a lot of stuff on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. The one thing I hate is this high temperature bed sheet. Look at all the bubbles that are popping up on it and look at the surface texture. That texture just shows right up on, on your parts. It's pretty annoying. And I don't, I refuse to use glue stick in this day and age. Look what I got here, the PEX flex sheet for the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. So here's everything inside. We have the the PEX build sheet with, on, the, on the spring steel sheet. We got some instructions. We got some QR codes for recognizing the build surface type and some stickers and a thank you, I think that's what it is. So I don't want to use any, any adhesives, no hairspray, no no glue stick, but I also don't want my PETG to stick. And it recommends using PETG as a barrier, but I refuse. I even bought another one of the sheets just because I know that I have to use trial and error to determine the proper settings. So let's get right to that. The first thing it wants us to do is peel off this protective film. So let's just do that real quick. With that finished, we see how nice and smooth and reflective it is. It does recommend uh, preparing the sheet with steel wool, but I'm gonna try not doing that at first because I was looking on the internet and people had success without doing that. So next we need to install a QR code sticker. So the QR code just goes right there. I got it on there. I don't think it matters what direction it is. Let's get this old sheet out of there and put the new one on. It seems here now it's aligned. So you can see it does stick out a little more on the front, but other than that, pretty well aligned and it still has the part on the top where it calibrates the extrusion or calibrates the nozzle height. Oh, I do notice that it does stick a lot more and it does scrape. It, does, it will scratch the bottom as you can see here. So just be mindful of that. So I finally got it on there. It was a bit hard to do with one hand, but I just gave it a quick clean with some isoprobal alcohol to remove all my fingerprints. So let's get printing. I also refuse to use the other build sheets like the cool plate, the engineering plate, the textured plate, because they all require glue stick. The high temperature plate is the closest thing to not requiring glue stick because it's basically just a PEI sheet, but it's not the highest quality. Before we can print, we have to uh, set up the setting so that we don't get any plastic sticking or adhering more than is required. So. I was looking around and people recommended using this start and NG code. It isn't exactly made for the wham bam sheet, but you can read here how to apply the start and NG code if you don't know how. So I applied that and I made a new printer profile for it. The next thing I did is I used the, the suggested temperatures and settings for the bamboo X1 that's provided by wham bam, the PLA wham bam, PETG wham bam, and ASA wham bam. So let's go to the PLA wham bam and you can see I changed the nozzle temperature, the high temp plate temperature. I always change the high temperature plate to the settings that wham bam recommended. This is pretty much a high temperature plate and the sticker that we got is the sticker that is on the high temperature plate provided by wham bam. Your printer will detect the PEX plate as a high temperature plate. So the same user that made the previous start and end code also made a test print for the PEX sheet to test out PETG. They provided a 3MF file so you could load all the PETG settings that this user prefers but I just downloaded the STL. I have it in here and I'm gonna uh, rotate it like how printables user has designed it to be printed. And I'm also gonna move it. So I have my generic PLA wham bam profile selected. I put my test piece in the bottom right corner. I'm gonna try PLA first just to make sure everything is properly configured. So when I slice it, this is what it looks like. You can see the purge line is not going around the back anymore which is more convenient to remove but it definitely will do bed leveling and i'll use bed leveling every time i print and confirm with this as that is definitely not true i printed with 60 degrees onto the bed with pla before it works just fine so the printer just calibrated and now it's doing its initial extrusion it's a pretty shiny surface so i expect kind of a mirror finish
The print just finished. I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. It's currently at 58 degrees, but I I'm able to I'm able to remove this this piece. I don't want to remove the whole thing, but it removes pretty easily even when it's hot. So I took the build sheet out of the printer so it would cool down quicker. And within three minutes, it was room temperature and then flipped it over and the part just fell off. You can see So I just started a print on some Overture PETG, this base gray color that I print with a lot. One thing I noticed is cleaning the sheet with, maybe it's just this microfiber cloth, it does leave some residue. So I noticed in the instructions that it recommended using paper towel and that worked a lot better. It didn't leave any residue. So the gray PETG part just finished. You can see it here. The The build plate is room temperature. So let's try and take this piece off. I did get it a little bit off before this. There we go. This piece, let's see if I can just lift it up as easy as that. This is Overture PETG. That seemed like it was, took a bit more, no. Just, and there's no marks or anything. Very minimal marking on the plate. Like there was nothing even there. Perfect. So I have uh, Polylite PETG from Polymaker. It's their electric blue. This one I decided to do uh, extrusion calibration because it's a new filament. So the blue PETG finished. The temp build plate is room temperature. Let's see how easy it comes off. This one is a little bit more difficult to get off. Definitely not as good as the Overture PETG. But it still comes off. I'm going to flex this and see if it comes off. So after flexing it, I did get it off. You can see it did leave a mark. So I guess when I'm printing with this material, I will need to use glue stick, unfortunately. Hopefully I can get this off without damaging the sheet too much. So we saw this damage before, but the calibration lines added a little more damage. But if you're using PLA or potentially Overture PETG, you should be good to print on this. Okay, I just printed some, I believe it's Polylite ASA, some black stuff on the Wham Bam bed. Here it is. When it came off, you can see it is room temperature right now, but it is, the bed is a little warped. I don't think it should be a big issue because of the magnetic base, but let's try and get the part off. The bed is not warm. Let me try and flex this. You can see here, I just took it off and it left a mark and it damaged the built bed sheet. That's unfortunate. Considering ABS and ASA are one of the recommended filaments. So I've just spent a couple minutes trying to take this off, but it's really difficult to get off. I'm not very happy with this. It was printed at a 110 degree bed and 250 celsius on the hot end i'm going to try a couple more tests brushing it with steel wool and some acetone it says here it's only if you lose grip so it's kind of confusing i'm not sure what to do they say they it can print abs and asa so since i've already destroyed the sheet down here and here and where the calibration goes I might as well keep testing over in this area with different temperatures to see if I can get it to work. So I just printed another piece. It came off the printer. It's a black ASA, the same as before. Printed at 240 Celsius. So let's see if it comes off any easier. Oh, wow. So temperature really does make a difference. Let's try a 
bit of a bigger piece. So I started a print with the the gray PETG that worked well last time. I, it was printed at 245 Celsius. This time I printed it at 240 and look what error I got. It didn't stick to the bed. That's very interesting. So this PETG would be better printed at 240, printed at a higher temperature. This outcome gives me hope that that blue PETG that we were printing with will print. I just need to tune the settings. All right, so the last time I printed this blue polylight PLA was printed at 245 degrees on the nozzle and 50 degrees on the bed. This time I've done 40 degrees on the nozzle and 50 degrees on the bed. So let's see if it comes off any easier. A good start. I think it was that easy on the last one though. Nope. I think all those marks were there before, but let's see, moment of truth. I'll have to bend it. So it did still leave a spot on the bed where it came off poorly. Let's try uh, 135 Celsius on the nozzle. Attempt three of the blue. The front piece comes off pretty easily. The side piece comes off easily. Still pretty difficult to get off. Let me try and break it off. So we still have a mark here where the piece was. It did come off easier, but I don't know if there's getting much around this mark. I mean, I could try go down to like 220, but if that doesn't even stick, that would be promising. We could probably fine tune a temperature in between 235 and 220. All right, so 220 blue PETG. Let's try and peel it off. Comes off just like the other temperatures so far. But the moment of truth is with this piece. No, it's not looking like it's gonna come off easy. So it did come off. You can see it left a little bit less of a mark than the rest of them, but the surface quality and of the part is gonna diminish at this low temperature. And I wouldn't recommend pay, printing PETG at this low of a temperature, but that's unfortunate. Some PETGs work well, others don't. ASA works really well, at least the one I tried, and PLA works really well. So those are the final results of the Wham Bam Flexible Build System. We printed out a couple different test pieces and you guys saw the results. Didn't work out exactly how I liked, but stay tuned. I have another bed solution coming in soon, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be the winner of everything. See you in the next video.